Nigeria drops in latest TI's corruption ranking. And that's because we dropped on the Corruption Perception Index published by Transparency International. According to the 2021 ranking released on Tuesday, Nigeria dropped five places, scoring 24 out of 100 points, ranking 154 out of 180 countries. This is Nigeria's second consecutive year of a downward spiral on the TICPI ranking. The country's score dropped from 26 in 2019 to 25 in the 2020 assessment and further to 24 in the latest 2021 record. What does this statistics mean for Nigeria? We do have uh, a guest joining the conversation, Mike, uh, Mark Adeboye. I, I beg to take that again, Mark Adebo Adebayo. Uh, he's a public affairs analyst. Uh, it's good to have you join us, Mark Adebayo. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so um, let's quickly share your thoughts. When you saw this, um, I mean, statement and ranking that's been put out, how does it make you feel for a country that is strong uh, with the fight against corruption? Um, well, uh, it didn't really come as a, as a surprise, actually. It didn't come as a surprise. Um, I, I don't think uh, we are strong on fighting corruption at all. We are not. If we were, we wouldn't be. The country wouldn't be going down on the scale of uh, uh, corruption perception index. And consistently, in the last ten years, Nigeria has not been doing well. So it's just uh, it's quite unfortunate. But before we even go into that, we should know that uh, the major cause uh, has been corruption. And all the socio-economic and political malaise that have been bedeviling the country are all traceable to corruption. Corruption has total destructive influence on every society and every country. And that is why Nigeria has been as it is. You know, but for corruption, all other or many other African countries will be struggling to catch up with Nigeria in the area of development. You know, but Nigeria is far behind, even the area of, of development, whether you talk of infrastructure, education, or health. You know, look at countries like Egypt, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, and uh, even Rwanda. Rwanda now, the cleanest city, officially the cleanest uh, country in Africa, is now moving up in leaps and bounds in the area of technology, in the area of uh, education and health. And of course, they have succeeded in the uniting their country in such a way that. Uh, you, you, you are a wonder, you are not a booty, you are not a peace. So corruption is a major albatross of, uh, of Nigeria's uh, Mali. So it's a major issue. And um, to be having this type of abysmal performance under a government that promised to fight corruption head on uh, for the past six years plus, uh, for to be having this type of uh, palace record is, uh, is quite unfortunate. As a Nigerian, I'm not happy. As a patriot in Nigeria, I'm not happy. The kind of uh, person, you know, when you go abroad, the way people look at you, you know, even at their airports, the way people perceive you. Because this corruption perception index is not just about the country, it's about the citizens, where you, you go out there. And then, of course, how many Nigerians trust one another, whether at home or abroad? So it is almost, uh, it, 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 is a, it is a cancer that has eaten deep into the fabrics of our society. And we must fight it head on. And I, I think at this moment, this anti corruption crusade and fight should not be left to the uh, government alone. I think we have a collective responsibility as citizens to, to do our work the way we should do it without asking for illegal gratifications. You know, look at what happens in our airports. Even those ones, you know, it, it, it beams our light in such a very bad and terrible way to the, to, to the outside world. People come from America, they come from Canada, they come from Dubai, they come from everywhere. And when they get to, a, to our airport, what do they find? What do they see? They see corruption, first hand. And then they begin to record and then post that one online, all over the world. How do we expect uh, our corruption perception index to, to, to look at any data? It's not going to look at any data. Hmm. Go, you know, there, there is indirect corruption and there is direct corruption. The indirect ones are the ones that are stolen in our parastatals and corporations and government agencies. You know, but the direct ones are the ones that uh, Nigerians encounter on a daily basis. 
of the road with the police. Mr. Adeboy, can you hear us, please? Well, we sincerely apologize for the um, the freezing screen. Uh, can you hear us, Mr. Adebayo? Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, um, please continue. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. So, it, yeah. So, I, I was talking about the indirect and direct corruption. The direct one is the one where you encounter security agencies where you are asked to give to drop money at one point or even, you know, look at you who are looking for a job. When you apply to, 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 to for, for a job in any corporation or past data, you are asked to bring 150,000, 200,000 naira to, to, for you to be employed. So the, the corruption, you know, is very deep and uh, pervasive in our society. And okay. it's something that uh, is quite unfortunate. It's affecting our, our development. Mr. Deba, you, you, you mentioned and you touched on several points that we were going to go through. Very interesting uh, answers you gave and analysis you've given. Um, but you mentioned the fact that this, this current administration led by President Muhammadu Buhari um, came into office with a, um, a posture of uh, being against corruption and fighting corruption. And yet we still see that Nigeria remain, continues to rise and go up on the Corruption Perception Index. Um, why is that the case? What are the things that they have failed to do or they are doing um, to make the situation worse? Well, I, I want to believe that um, there is too much political influence on the anti-corruption agencies. When, uh, you know, a lot of allegations, even against the Attorney General of the Federation that, uh, uh, you know, you know, you can see that when there's no, you can see that there's no sense of diligent prosecution on some, on some uh, alleged corrupt, corrupt uh, public uh, officials. You know, except where there is a political interest, where the, 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 the government has political interest in an individual, that's where you see them, they will, they will prosecute with gusto, with determination, with effectiveness, with. Uh, you know, or usual efficiency. So, but where there is no political will or interest, where the person involved is on the good side of government, you don't see that kind of diligent prosecution. And that's why you can see a, a corruption case would drag on for 10, 12, 15 years. What are you prosecuting? You know, normally you already you must have gathered all your evidence before you take somebody to court. So, what are you prosecuting for 15 years? So, our there is no, you cannot see that will, there's no political will to really fight corruption on the part of the government. There is no, you do not see that determination on the part of government. There is no that seriousness. So nobody could have thought that with the Buhari in power, that corruption will be this terrible, will remain as terrible as it is today. It is a major disappointment because it's one of the uh, fundamental promises of the president before he came to power. But uh, you don't see, you don't see that. You know, when Buhari came to power, there was this fear factor. Fear factor. Everybody, the, the civil service, the politicians, everybody was afraid this man is coming, he's going to crack down on all corrupt uh, politicians, he's going to crack down on, on all corrupt agencies, people. Everybody, until then, they, they, they saw lethargy, they saw lack of uh, commitment, they, 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 they saw. You know, everybody sat up when Buhari was coming up. Everybody really sat up. They were expecting a massive tsunami. Is not against corruption and against corrupt uh, public officials. What uh, the president came and then, of course, what did his party say? If you join APC, your sins are forgiven. So, the people be, be, be became emboldened again. You know, police began to collect, uh, you know, tight on the road openly, and all manner of things are happening at our airports and our agencies and parastators, and it's quite unfortunate. So, I think the major issue is lack of political will on the part of government to fight corruption. If there's the political will, Corruption will fizzle out, and okay. at least by ninety percent, it will, it will go down. It will reduce, even if you cannot eliminate it. Okay, so um, um, let's also talk about the fact that uh, if you look at this report, some people have queried and questioned the fact that the reports by Transparency International is quite limiting because it looks at the public sector, the corruption in the public sector. They have actually mentioned some of the perception index that they use, seven witnesses as observed in Nigeria, the issue of damning audit report, security sector corruption, failure to investigate high profile corruption and cases. And you also have absence of asset recovery protection, 
of whistleblowers and other key anti-corruption legal frameworks, judicial challenges, corruption in COVID-19 response, Twitter ban and shrinking civil service, I mean civic space and intimidation of human rights defenders. Now these are the indices that has been used, which we'd like to share your thoughts on briefly. But also on the other hand, do you think that this, um, you know, uh, perception or this ranking is not holistic? As he doesn't talk about, you know, the corruption in the private sector. Uh, well, uh, let me take one element first, the issue of a whistle, whistleblowing. You know, that initiative, if it had been handled well, you know, it, it would have gone away. It, 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 because that is one way to drag, to drag in the citizen. That is one way to encourage citizen participation in the anti-corruption crusade. You understand? So, uh, uh, this whistleblowing, because if, you, if, if I elect a councillor who two years ago didn't have uh, a bicycle, but suddenly after... After one year in office, he's, he's building a mansion, he's riding uh, latest Benz, then the citizens can blow with you on him. You understand? But what, what did we see? The government itself discouraged whistleblowing because the promise is 5% or so of, of recovered loot to, to the whistleblower. So Nigerians became very eager to look for who to blow whistle on. Uh, this one uh, uh, cannot defend the, the means of his, uh, of his weight and rest of that. But what happened? The government began to disappoint them. There was no, there was no witness protection uh, regimen to protect the whistleblowers. And of course, the government will recover huge loot and will not fulfill its own side of the bargain to give the guy the 5%. So Nigerians became... And of course, they, 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 there were incidences where... where the whistleblower is exposed by the anti-corruption uh, you know, agents, personnel, who say, oh, this is the person that... So who, who, who wants to die? Nobody wants to die. So we just say, okay, let... So the citizens, they rush in and they rush out. So that's why the whistleblowing initiative failed. Now, on the issue of not uh, interrogating the corruption at the level of private sector, corruption is as rife in the private sector as it is in the public sector. The only difference is that you see businesses flourishing because... Um, people handle their own personal private businesses better than they handle government business. But in, in the private sector, there are all, there are all manners of uh, corruption in that place, including sexual harassment of, uh, of staff, which, which, is, uh, which to me is uh, one of the worst uh, corruption uh, practices that you, you, can, you can have. I, I, but, you know, Government mirrors the society. That is why anti-corruption, uh, non-governmental organizations beam their lights more on government because the government mirrors the society and uh, government is even at the, at the level of private, at the private sector level, the government is also responsible for looking at corruption in those areas. How much are they looking at it? How well are they beaming their light on the on the uh, on the private sector? The EFCC, CPC, and Co. NFIU, they are not beaming their lights too much on the private sector. They should do more about that. They should do more about it. So it, it is, um, and Nigerians too, if you, uh, you know, the, the, one of the mantras of, uh, of EFCC is uh, uh, see something, say something, do something. You know, that one came about during the tenure of uh, uh, Waziri, uh, Madam Waziri. So that it came. So see something, say something, do something. Let us see. If you see something, let us say something. Go ahead and do something about it. I don't think we should be afraid of because corruption is a major cancer on our body politic, right. and it is not affecting only one sector. It's affecting everybody. We are here. We are. We are. We are today as one of the poorest managed countries in the world because of corruption. Nothing Mr. more. Mr. Deba, you, you mentioned the, the, the EFCC uh, a few seconds ago. And um, interestingly, the um, Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission, ICPC, uh, quickly, swiftly, uh, no surprises, I'm sure you'd agree, released a statement um, titled IPCC Statement on the Corruption Perceptions Index by Transparency um, International. And they are saying that the report is unfair and untenable, as Transparency International, um, they're saying, has consistently failed to recognize the efforts of the government to tame corruption. They say these efforts include increasing the number of cases filed in court and jail terms secured in several convictions against corrupt persons across all levels of society, including hitherto 
sacred cows. What do you say to that? Well, you know, Nigerian government is always very defensive. Nigerian government and the senior are always going on the defensive when any time any negative reports come about. The, the, uh, the report is a, it's a true reflection of what is happening in Nigeria. Whatever ICPC or anybody says does not change that fact. That is the, that is the truth. So we know that uh, Nigeria is a heavily corrupt, uh, 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 is run by highly corrupt uh, you know, individuals who who don't buy an eyelid to steal money from public uh, too. So that's the, the ICPC should not go on the offensive. It should just they just agree. Yes, you are, they are claiming they are making effort doing this, doing that, but efforts are not acknowledged. What is acknowledged is success. So how, how, how successful have they been in the fight against corruption? Yes, they are. You can say maybe they are, they are, they are, they are increasing in their activities of uh, trying to cope corruption, but your efforts are not. It's not efforts are not what uh, what are acknowledged. It is success that is acknowledged. How, how successful have you been in doing that? Have you how have you been able to reduce corruption? Rather than reducing corruption, you can see corruption is bojoni, and uh, your efforts we amount to nothing if the results are not are not uh, there for people to see. We need a result. It's not about effort. Hmm. Okay. But, uh, are you there, it's Mr. Demers? Okay. It's about results. It's about results. Yes, I'm here, and I'm hearing you. Okay. Well, what about the fact that, you know, this, this, this index by uh, Transparency International, is, it's not, it doesn't um, uh, uh, take the statistical facts and look at them. It just looks at perception, um, looking at what people think, about what they've been hearing about the country, what they've been seeing in the news, um, some of the, the negative stories that have been coming out, and not really doing a statistical case-by-case -case analysis to really compare. Um, the, the ICPC, of course, yes, will say they're government, and government will, will always um, uh, uh, respond to these things. But if you look at the fact that this is basically on perception based on the events we've been hearing around us, um, should we really, really hold on to this? Uh, for instance, one record, one statistic that cannot be um, uh, uh, faulted, and the ICPC has placed this before us in the past, is that Nigeria is leading Africa in assets recovery. That is in the recovery of the proceeds of corruption. No other country in Africa is recovering as much as Nigeria is recording. What, what, what do you say to this? Well, you see, uh, yes, perception, but perception... It's like a select. It's like a, you know your 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 shadow, uh, and uh, it is it is uh, considerably representative of uh, of of the kind of uh, person that you are. So your shadow, wherever you go, if you bend it bends, if you stand it stands, if you sit it sits. So uh, we cannot throw it away. TI is a credible international organization when it comes to in the area of. Uh, uh, corruption, but the fact that they are, they are not, they did not go. The report did not go on a case of case, uh, case to case uh, basis. Does not uh, render it uh, the report invalid. It is for us to, to to see it as our reality and work up and work on it and ensure that this type of report does not come again. That is it. It's our responsibility to ensure that we work. To destroy corruption before corruption destroy all of us in this country. Yeah, That's but, but, but we, should, it, it, we should not be defensive yes. about it. Yeah, but Mr. Deborah, it's a ranking, um, you know, that places countries with with different realities and different dynamics within their own their own environment on on a table that would 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 send a message to the international community it may affect you know investment and all. One would say could argue that um, an organisation like Transparency International is not really may not be equipped. Um, you know, to, to make such a ranking that would affect the fortunes of nations, bearing in mind the different dynamics of these nations, and that we shouldn't be ranking people uh, on a corruption chart based on perception, because people will take that perception and make it their reality and make real decisions out of this. If you cannot go down to the, the nitty-gritty to get the details, to give the statistics, um, don't just take the perception of, of some people and take some news stories and then make it up into a ranking that you would give out to the international community to help them make decisions on what country to invest in, for instance. That is, it's very loosely, you know, um, uh, based, based ranking that, that has far-reaching effects and consequences for countries around the world and their economies. I agree with you totally that uh, perception is, uh, is important and it will affect the country's uh, uh, 
you know, FD and foreign direct investment substantially. But if you go to the streets of Nigeria today and do and conduct a false popular, you will discover that Nigerians, 99% of Nigerians will agree with the TPI's uh, ranking and report. Because we see corruption every day, we experience corruption every day, we are victims of corruption every day. The, yesterday, just yesterday, I, I, was, uh, I was with, uh, uh, with a popular former, former, former senator, uh, no, an experienced uh, ranking former senator. And uh, there and then he received a call from the airport, from the international airport here in Abuja. And there, there is a letter, there is a, a password that contains some documents that was sent to me by the UN, by the United Nations. And uh, the courier called him to say that some, some guys were demanding for bribe for, for him to, to, to pass through with, with something that is not a contraband, official letter from the United Nations organization, you know, to, to a Nigerian, you know. So, the man said, uh, right there, the man said, uh, he's not, he's not uh, going to give that if the man, if the pilot, in fact, that one was a pilot, if the pilot should give them anything, he's not going to refund him because why, why should they want to, what should they demand? That they, should they should open the password and see what's inside? Mm. Is it, they are just doc documents. Okay, why do they want to collect? Uh, so it, the issue is that we experience corruption every day. And uh, for anybody to want to hide behind one finger, saying that uh, TI is wrong in his uh, ranking, I would not subscribe to that. So, no, so, we should we, let us accept our reality and do something and work on it. Do something about our our situation rather than complaining about the perception ranking of a TI. TI is doing his job. Let okay. us do our job the, the here in the country. It's about it's about publishing the research parameters. If you are doing a statistical ranking, where are the parameters on which your data is based? So it can be disaggregated. And for scrutiny, but we have to, we have to, we have to bring it to an end well, thank at you this so point. Much, uh, Mark Adebayo, we do appreciate you. Thank, thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Thank you so much. I mean, well, there are too many questions to ask, but of course, we have limited time, and we look forward to having more of this conversation. And we appreciate your time. Thank you for coming. Thank you. The government should just do its job. Thank <laughs> All you. right. Thank you. We appreciate. And that's the size of the conversation. That's the size of the show this morning. It's been a great time. Seven o'clock till this moment. We will definitely return tomorrow. And it promises to be a great time as well. Now, if you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, but Plus TV Africa. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bopo. I'm Kofi Bartels. We'll return tomorrow. Good morning. <laughs>